So Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is the Resident Evil movie mulligan after the Paul W.S. Anderson movies have been wrapped up for a few years now. Now it's time. Okay, we're going to reboot the franchise because <laughs> that's that's what happens. You know, when something wraps up in cinema, it's like, okay, do we make a sequel or a remake? -quel? What are we doing? So Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is the telling of Resident Evil 1 the game and Resident Evil 2 the game crushed into one movie. Which right there, the, the signals, the warning lights start going off when I hear that and even when I was watching that. It's hard enough adapting a video game into a two hour movie because that's hours upon hours of gameplay and story being crushed into two hours. So someone out there had the bright idea like, okay, well that sounds hard enough, so let's take two video games and crush it into one movie that's about an hour and a half. And right when this movie started, and as it kept going, I was like, okay, I'm bored. And you might be thinking, you would be right to think that. You'd be like, makes sense. World building, character development, patience, Jeremy. But it didn't feel like that at all. It wasn't building up the world. It wasn't fleshing out the characters. In fact, by the end of this movie, I was met with the feeling of everything I know about the characters I knew from the game. Felt like this movie relied on the video game doing the heavy lifting of character development. Which sucks, I don't like it when movie adaptations of video games do that, you know? Like, assume that the audience hasn't played the game. Like, you look at Arcane. I haven't reviewed Arcane, the League of Legends series yet, but I will. Patience, folks, it's coming. Give me time to gorge on Thanksgiving and a weekend to be in a coma after that. It's holiday calories, it doesn't count, that's food law. But one of the things I love about Arcane is it doesn't rely on the video game to build the world. It assumes the audience has never played the game before. So it's world building is done in the series. It's character development is done in the series. That's how it should be done. I wasn't met with that feeling with this Resident Evil movie, which is funny that it feels that way because then the movie wants to put in for some extra credit and gives you this Claire and Chris Redfield backstory where they were in some super shady orphanage. And the movie starts out with that and it seems to go on forever. It was probably three and a half minutes. It felt like 15. The point is after this backstory when they were kids, then it starts out Claire's in the semi with the dude eating the burger and he's, I was like, oh, Resident Evil 2. So why didn't the movie just start out here? I have no good reason. Even by the end of the movie, that whole backstory with the orphanage thing could have been taken out. It wouldn't have affected the movie at all. The characters in this movie are a mix of generic characters they had on screen so they can tick the box like, okay, we, we technically had that character from the game, so it works. And then you had Claire Redfield, who was the standout. And Claire has always been a standout in the Resident Evil series, so I'm glad she's the standout in the movie. I thought Claire in here was actually well done in terms of Claire. It was a good job, movie. You did Claire well. Wesker? <laughs> When when his name is dropped, like, hey, Wesker, I was like, get the fuck out of here. You serious? For a second, I thought he was Wesker's kid from Resident Evil 6. He would have worked in that capacity. Wesker in this movie is kind of like if Wesker was in his late 20s, but he couldn't leave the college life behind, you know? He couldn't leave the frat behind. He was still broing. I mean, Leon's still rookie cop in here, but why have rookie cop who steps up to take on hordes of the undead with Claire Redfield? When you can have rookie cop be the butt of all the jokes. And he might as well have been called Gomer Pyle in here. He really is that incompetent. And the guy's just, he's not good at being a cop. At a point they go to the armory and he doesn't know how to work a shotgun. It's like, okay, did you work at a fast food restaurant and then you just found a dead cop and you put on his uniform. You're like, all right, sweet. I'm gonna play cop now. Cause that's about how cop you're coming across. There's even this one scene where Leon and Claire are bonding. And he's like, bet you're, Kind of wondering how someone like me became a cop. She was like, yeah, kind of. And he was like, me too. I was like, oh, that's that's the end of the story. Fair enough. Won't lie, I was kind of hoping for some answers, but if you don't have them, how can I expect you to give them to me? And other than the fact that the setup of this movie, the first hour is boring as hell, when the zombies start coming on in the mansion, I was like, okay, it's kicking on, let's do it. And it started to feel like that Resident Evil movie I was really hoping for back in the 90s, and then okay, the movie ends. It has this fair amount of things that are from the game that make this feel like a better representation of Resident Evil, at least a more accurate one when you line up the Resident Evil movies that came before it and this one. You look at some of the sets, the sets are equal parts impressive and baffling. Like when you get into the mansion, I was like, yeah, that's 
It's the mansion, you know, it's that big gaudy mansion you want to see. More accurate than the previous movie did it. So I dig that. Raccoon Police Department, RPD, you're looking at the lobby, you're like, it has a big statue in the background. You're like, this is bold from the game. I appreciate that. But then there are scenes where their police chief is breaking down. Okay, you guys are going to go to the mansion. And they're in this room that doesn't look like it's part of the same building. This office looks like it's one of those mobile offices you see at used car lots or construction sites or something. And no, not in that way of like, well, it's a big building. Certain parts of the building are going to feel different. No, it just, it felt like they had two completely different filming locations. They were like, well, it doesn't really feel like it matches doesn't matter. The script in this movie too, so far I've just kind of compared it to the game and how it is as a Resident Evil movie. This, <laughs> the script. A lot of the character dialogue in here comes across as lazy, in which I don't know if the actors were given free agency to improv, or maybe the script had a certain phrase and maybe the director was like, I mean, you can phrase it however you want. But on more than a few occasions, you had just a bunch of characters interjecting the word fuck in between every other word. One character that I can think of was really surprised and he's going, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh. Oh, fuck. I'm like, cat got your tongue, dude? Sometimes less is more. It just came across like high school drama class improv in which the teacher was like, okay, I don't care what you say as long as it's the first thing that comes to your mind. So you have a bunch of high school students going, oh, fuck, I, oh, fuck. Fuck. I mean, not that I care about curse words. What do I give a shit? You know me. The word fuck doesn't offend me. Lazy scripts do. There were a couple scenes in here that were cool. It's like someone, you ever do that? You ever sit around like, oh, someone should put that in a horror movie or someone should put that in an action movie. That'd be a sweet shot. Moments like that happen in here, you know? One with Chris Redfield and he's in the dark trying to fight zombies. His only light source is the blast from the muzzle. I thought that was pretty neat and you know, stylish. I dug it. That's the thing about this movie. It has moments of imagination under a blanket of straight to DVD. And when you see things in here that you're like, dude, that's from the game and I want that to be awesome but the game just did it better. I feel like it's more telling of the times we live in. You know, when Resident Evil came out, Resident Evil 2 came out, you're playing this game on PlayStation. The polygons, you know, they're PlayStation 1 polygons. So the thought of seeing this in full cinematic glory, that was just an amazing thought. Something that I was waiting, bated breath. I really wanted to see that. And turns out I finally did see that in the Resident Evil 2 remake that came out. We're in the phase of gaming now where games like the Resident Evil 2 remake give you that Resident Evil cinematic experience that a movie could only hope to live up to, but also gives you an amazing gameplay experience that a video game should give. In that, I don't need a Resident Evil movie like I felt I did back in the 90s. It's almost a guarantee that it'll fall short of whatever the video games can conjure these days. And as seen, I feel that's how it went down. The characters had shit development, the pacing was off, and I can't say I'm gonna ever watch this movie again. I'd rather just play the Resident Evil 2 remake. I'm just not gonna remember it in T minus one day. Yep, already forgot. All right, so Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? <laughs> Are you gonna see it? I saw one trailer for this movie in my entire life, and that was when I was in the theater there to watch something else, forgot what. Anyhow, I feel like the marketing for this movie sucked, but it is in theaters now. Or what's a video game from the 90s that you would like to see an adaptation happen? Legacy of Kane? I know, me too. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>